In this lecture, we are going to get started with our project of building an application from scratch with augmented reality. To get started in this lecture, we are going to build the iOS application for the project and implement augmented reality. So join me in Xcode where we'll select create a new Xcode project. Here we'll be prompted to select a template for our project. The platform is iOS and the application type is app. You can also use the augmented reality app template, but we're going to learn augmented reality from scratch, how to implement it, because that way you'll understand how the actual augmented reality system works for iOS. All right, then we can press next and let's give our product a name. I will call this project our augmented reality from scratch. We will have to select a team. So if you have a team, do select it. Otherwise, I'll show you how you can add in a team later. You'll need a team in order to test augmented reality applications. And to get a team, you just need an Apple account. All right, then you'll have your organization identifier. This could be any URL. And our interface will be Swift UI and the language Swift. Then you can press the next button and you'll be prompted to save your application. So I'll save mine. You can then press create. That will allow you to actually save the project in that desired folder. Now the project is loading up. Xcode is creating the project and shortly it will be ready. We just created your standard iOS application and we'll add in the augmented reality together. So when the project has loaded, you can pop open contentview.swift. This here is just your standard content view. It's just rendering hello world, a piece of text in your app. You can also change the simulator that you're using. Note that for augmented reality, you will have to have an actual device like an iPhone or an iPad because the simulator will allow you to just preview your content view, your basic iOS app, but you can't preview augmented reality in the simulator or in the preview. So you will need an actual device. All right, let's get started in content view. Here we just have your typical content view struct. At the top of the file, I'm going to import AR kit, which will allow us to use the augmented reality kit library. I'm also going to import reality kit as well. All right, then we're going to make a struct called reality kit view. Okay, just make sure you spell reality kit correctly. Okay, then let's create a new struct. This will be called reality kit view and it will be of type UI view representable. A UI view representable is a wrapper for a UI kit view that you use to integrate a view into your app. All right, so that is the type for the struct. And similar to a view, which is the content view. In here, we're going to create a function called make UI view. This is to make the actual augmented reality scene. This will take in a context object, the context of the scene, and it's going to return an augmented reality view. This is a view that displays an augmented reality experience, which incorporates content from reality kit. All right, so that is make UI view. In here, we're going to instantiate a constant view and use the class AR view and we'll return the view. All right, now as well, I'm going to have to update the UI view. We'll add that as well for whatever we want to do upon update. And we can add that later. Okay, so we have our here reality kit view, UI view representable. Now you may get prompted here to add protocol stubs, which you can click fix and it will just fill in update UI view for you. So if you want to build this struct of a reality kit view of type UI view representable, then you do have to here 
update UI view and make UI view. Okay, and you don't have to put in any code to update UI view for now if you don't want to have any kind of specific update. All right, so there we have our reality kit view struct and our function update UI view as well as make UI view, which returns the augmented reality scene. Inside of this function make UI view, I want to actually start a new augmented reality session. So to do that, I'm going to instantiate a session from the view. So I'm going to create a constant called session and use view.session. This is the augmented reality session that supports the views rendering. I'm also going to create a configuration using augmented reality world tracking configuration. This is a configuration that tracks the position of a device in relation to objects in the environment. So I'm instantiating an object of that class. Okay, and I can hide my preview because we're going to have to use a real device instead of the preview. Now we have to put to use the session and the config. And I'm going to call session.run and this is going to start augmented reality processing for the session with the specified configuration and options. And I pass in the config. I also want to set the config's plane detection. This is a value that specifies whether and how the session automatically attempts to detect flat surfaces in the cap camera captured image. So we're detecting planes in our camera. I'm going to detect horizontal planes. So my array is going to search for horizontal, which means the session detects planar surfaces that are perpendicular to gravity. So we're detecting horizontal surfaces like a table or the seat of a chair, horizontal planes. I'm going to also add a coaching overlay. So after I have created the session, I'm going to instantiate a constant coaching overlay and I'm going to instantiate an AR coaching overlay view. This is a view that displays standardized onboarding instructions to direct users toward a specific goal. So we need to help our user go through the application. So that is the AR coaching overlay view. It's going to tell the user how to use the augmented reality app. I'm going to set several properties of coaching overlay like auto resizing mask. This is an integer bit mask that determines how the receiver resizes itself when it super views bounds change. We want to have a flexible size for the scene so that we can work on different devices. So I'm going to set the auto resizing mask to be a list of properties. We have flexible width, which means that the resizing will be performed by expanding or shrinking a view's width. So we want flexible width and also we want flexible height. Okay, that will set the coaching overlay to be able to look good on different devices. I also need to set the coaching overlay session. So I'm going to set its session property. This is the session that this view is going to use to provide the coaching. That will be our session constant that we created together. We're also going to set the goal of the coaching overlay. So coaching overlay dot goal. And this refers to a field that indicates your app's tracking requirements. And I'm going to set it to the horizontal plane, which means that a goal, the goal that's specifying means that our app needs a horizontal plane. So we're going to be looking for horizontal planes. Then we need to add the coaching overlay. So we use view.add subview. This will add a view to our whole list of subviews. The view that I want to add is the coaching overlay. As well, now in our content view, we have to change what is being rendered because the content view is actually storing the whole app. So we have to put in the augmented reality scene into the content view instead of this text hello world. So I'm going to remove the text and instead use a reality kit view, All right? So that is a new instance of the reality kit view. And we can say we want to ignore the safe area so we can expand the view all the way to the edge of the screen. Awesome, okay, so that is how we can create a new augmented reality view with a coaching overlay. Now for this to actually work, if we want to run this, we need a device like an iPhone or an iPad, and the device has to be compatible with our version of the project. So if you go to your target, which is the top level element in your project hierarchy, 
go to deployment info and change the deployment. I'm using iOS 15. Then you'll have to have an iPhone or an iPad that can run at least iOS 15 if that is your deployment. So choose your deployment version. I'm using iOS 15 for this project. Your device will have to have at least iOS 15 if your project deployment is iOS 15. If you want to learn more iOS development, then pledge to our Kickstarter, the Complete 22 Web Development and Machine Learning Bundle, which also has a lot of app development content. And it is live now, link in description.